I thank moms for the daughter that she raised I thank pops for the dues that he paid And all my aunties is real true Amazons Every uncle is a black James Bond Smoke, walk like you got soul Yo, once again, this is Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop. Thanks for joining me. We are doing a series on hip-hop production with one of my favorite Sonic Scoop contributors, Mr. Paul Willie Green Womack, tremendous producer, engineer, mixer. He's worked with The Roots. He's worked with Wiz Khalifa and so many more. And today he's going to be doing a video for us that's all about mixing in the hip-hop context. He's going to be using his favorite DAW, Cubase. He's been using it for like two decades and using almost exclusively stock tools inside of Cubase. He's also going to be using a couple of their fancy add-ons like Backbone, but it's all going to be Steinberg stuff. Of course, the insights you're going to get and the techniques you're going to get are going to be applicable no matter what DAW you're in. But if you're out there shopping for a DAW, Paul loves Cubase for a reason. They've been around for ages and are one of the best DAWs out there. So big thanks and shout out to those guys for helping us bring this one totally free to the public. Thank you for joining us. Remember to hit like and subscribe down below. Hit that notifications bell to make sure you don't miss any more great videos like this one. All right, without further ado, we're going to go through a hip hop mix with Paul Womack. Paul, Mr. Willie Green, take it away. All right, peace, everybody. It's Willie Green, and we're back here working on family with Liquid, and it's time for my favorite part of the whole process. We got the beat made, we got the vocals in, everything is cleaned up, and it's time for the mix. It's time to bring it all together. So in the interest of time, what I've done since you've seen me last is I went ahead and I mixed the record. A record like this will probably take me three hours or so, and that's a long video. So I mixed the record and now I'm gonna take you through it and break down how I did everything here. So we'll just start off, we'll play a little bit from the top, did a little bit of finesse stuff at the beginning there, and then we'll go through element by element and we'll see what's good. Here's how we're looking from the top of the song. I'm so grateful. Look to the God above, you so able. Look at the God within, she's so capable. Think it, believe it, just know that it's attainable. I thank moms for the daughter that she raised. I thank pops for the dues that he paid. And all my aunties is real true Amazons. Every uncle is a black James Bond. Smoke, walk like you got soul. But don't lose that groove, all the ancestors looking back in my reflection So when I have my daughter, I can learn it a lesson You see that land out there, it belongs to you Anything you imagine you can do The world is bound to tell you no, so demand a yes And you will always win if you always give your best See your friends or the family you choose Always make the money, never let the money make you No matter the digits of the miles that you roam You never too far gone can't dial home, I love you Everything that you are, everything that you ain't You my one true star Shoot for the moon, your land in the galaxy Heaven is within and connected by your tapestry I love you, everything that you are Everything that you ain't, you my unborn star Shoot for the moon, in your land in the galaxy Heaven is within Look. Is you sis or you sus? Is you right or you just? Cause a righteous soul would never all right, so we'll hold up right there. General concepts. This isn't the kind of record where we're going to be doing a lot of crazy pitch shifting on the vocals. Uh, it just doesn't really call for that. So our verse vocals are pretty much straight ahead. And then, as you know from the other videos, we did some layering and the hooks. As far as how the sample is chopped, that hasn't changed. The effects on that haven't changed. We did some filtering at the beginning of the record, which we'll take a look at. Let's just start with these elements and just dive in. Let's start... I'll start with the verse vocal, but I'm going to jump forward past that filtered intro for a second because I want to look at how the vocal is fitting with everything else. A good buddy of mine, my man Miles Walker, explained it to me one time. He was like, so many people work in solo where they just do the drums first or whatever, but we're not mixing karaoke records. The vocal is there, and if the vocal is the most important part of your record, begin with that and build everything around it. Then you know everything's going to fit with the main event. So we're going to look at this vocal starting here first. I thank moms for the daughter that she raised. I thank pops for the dues that he paid. Right, so we're doing this all in the box today, all with stock Steinberg stuff. 
One, because the stock Steinberg effects are great. And two, I want to let you know how you can apply this to any software that you're using. Or if you just have the stock plugs and you don't have a whole bunch of third-party stuff, you're still good. Any of this stuff can apply to whatever you got going on with you right now. So this is a little peek at the vocal chain here. Pretty straightforward stuff. A bit of compression, some EQ, and we can look at which of those comes first. Spoiler alert, it depends. Got a little bit of de-essing going on, and then we're sending to a little bit of a slap delay. Compression-wise, let's look at that. I'm hitting this one. I don't always compress super heavy. I see myself as a low compression ratio type of person, but this one, I just wanted to lock her in just right there, hanging right in front of you because everything she's saying is so critical. It's all very lyrical. It's all very lyrical. The lyrical content is important here. And so I want to make sure that everything Liquid is saying is staying right there for you. So we're up three and a half, 3.7 to one, just enough attack to let the, the consonant and, and that stuff come through without choking it and really, you know, muffling her sound. And then the release is the same deal. I've got it not too long because I want it to let off to preserve any kind of dynamics she has in her voice. So I want to let that off. So about 600 milliseconds on the release time, and you got to play that by ear. You got to listen. That's going to depend on the flow of the MC, the tempo of the song, all of these different things. So you got to listen and play with that release time, but you'll know when it opens up, all of a sudden it should be right here in the room with you. And that's what we're looking for, especially on a record like this. So let's take a listen to that compression. I thank moms for the daughter that she raised. I thank pops for the dues that he paid. And now my aunties is real true Amazons. Every uncle is a black James Bond. Smooth. Walk like you got soul. All right, so not changing who she is and what she sounds like. It's not an effect. It's just enough of that grab to just hold her right there in front of us. After that, we go... So I got a little EQ here and just notching out some spots where I thought it was building up a little too much. Nothing crazy. And again, this isn't a special effect EQ. We've got some of that later on, so we'll look at that. Uh, let's just notch out a couple of things. Now, should this EQ be before or after the compressor? I don't know. Let's take a listen. Right now, we've been hearing it after. Let's hear it before. I thank moms for the daughter that she raised. I thank pops for the dues that he paid. And now my aunties is real true Amazons. Every uncle is a black James Bond. Smooth. So not a dramatic difference. Really, when you're looking at what is the difference between EQing pre or post compression, it's do you want to compress the EQ'd sound? Or do you want to EQ the compressed sound? I know that sounds obvious, but that really is what it comes down to. These little bits here that I'm notching out are just to control where it's building up. Part of that buildup is the compressor squeezing everything together. So in this case, I'm knocking those things out afterwards. If I had a real trouble frequency within my track, that was building up a lot and causing the compressor to react in a way I don't want to, I want to notch that stuff out pre-compressor so the compressor does what I'm asking it to do. In this case, frequency is not so problematic, so I'm good kind of either way. We'll leave it where it was. Same thing with the de -esser. If you've got something super sibilant and that's going to trigger your compressor, then you want to put that de -esser earlier on. In this case, I don't want to compress too much. Liquid has just the slightest hint of a lisp, and so I don't want to DS a lot and exacerbate that and really take out any detail in her in, in her sibilance. So I'm just touching it a little bit. But over here is where it gets a little interesting. So instead of having a reverb on the vocal, a reverb on a hip-hop vocal is not super common. Uh, it's not to say you can't do it. If it sounds right to you, splash that thing up. But in this case, I want to give Liquid a little bit of space so she's existing somewhere. When a vocal is just completely dry, to me, that sounds unnatural. Any room that you're in, including this one I'm in or wherever you're at, has some kind of natural reverb to it. If a vocal is just completely dry, to me, it sounds unnatural. But I don't want a big reverb trail for my rap vocal, which is quick and active, to be just kind of hanging on for too long. 
especially I use a lot of kind of longer delays. So I don't want to gum up the works there too much. And we've got some other things going to the verb. So I'm using a slap delay right over here, uh, just in the stereo delay. And just had a 16th note. And so it's hitting and you hear that initial slap back, basically like an early reflection off a of reverb, but is just a little bit of feedback, so it's not going on forever. And so it's more implying a space than actually putting her in a whole reverb. I thank moms for the daughter that she raised. I thank pops for the dues that he paid. And now my aunties is real true Amazons. So in solo, you can really hear that ringing out. Within the mix... I thank moms for the daughter that she raised. I thank pops for the dues that he paid. And now my aunties is real true Amazons. All right, so you hear that. You hear a little bit of that slap, but it gets out of the way. And it just, like I said, implies that space. A lot of mixing is some kind of trickery to make the ear feel a certain way. And we'll look at that when we get to the bass. So that's all that's happening on my lead vocals. What we've also got in here, we got a dub track. For those who don't know, or maybe call it something else, a dub is certain uh, certain lines are accented or doubled, but not a full double like we do stacking the hook, where it's the whole thing along. Dubs are certain certain points of emphasis. So we've got this dub track in here, and it hits things like this. Leave it, just know that it's attainable. I thank Miles for. All right, so. This is where it's a context thing, and just like everything with us, it all comes back to what is the song asking you for, all right? So this is a personal song. This is a family song, hence the name. This is something that is not meant to be super hype, rah, rah, rah type, MOP type of stuff. So we've got the dub in here to accent certain lines, but it's tucked away. It's not super present like it might be on another kind of record. So we're blending that in. And we are also, I'm running it through a gate. I can go and chop everything out, but the gate here in Cubase is pretty nice where if it's certain mouth sounds in between lines or whatever, let's just go ahead and just get rid of that stuff and just have it open up when she's ready to speak. So we got the gate here, we got the compressor. And now this EQ, we're a bit more aggressive. I'm rolling off some of the top end, and that is to push that dub vocal back behind the lead a little bit. Remember, as you roll off your top end, things feel as they, they're pushing back further from you. And so I want that dub to sit, if the lead is here, I want that dub to sit here. So I'm rolling off just a little bit of the top end, all right? And then around 500, it starts to build up. And then over here, 240 in that 240 to 250 300 range in there it starts to get a little muddy and i don't want liquid's voice to get boomy when the dubs come in i just want that slight emphasis so i'm knocking that stuff out so it just blends with the lead not overtakes it let's hear it leave it just know that it's attainable i thank moms for the daughter that she raised i thank pops for the dues that he paid and now my aunties is real true amazons every uncle is a black james bond like right, so it's just going to ring out when it needs to. As far as send effects on the dub track, this one I'm approaching a little bit different. If you know me, if you know how I get down, a lot of times on the dubs, I'll just put an eighth note delay on it. So those accent words, those ring out audibly, but on the lead track, it doesn't get too murky. But this beat, as much as we've got sample and kind of, you know, found sounds and natural loops going on within there, it's kind of an open beat, right? And so I don't want that delay from the dub just constantly hitting out. So I'm automating certain spots where I want that echo. So right here. Dudes that he paid and I'm a Dudes that he paid, paid. So just a little, a little bit of that. If you think, if you're at a rap show, the dubs are your hype man or your hype woman, your hype person, right? That's the person on stage saying certain words and backing up the, the MC. That's what the dub track is doing. And traditionally in hip hop, sometimes you'll get someone will say a line and then that hype person will echo it generally an eighth note or maybe sometimes a quarter note after for certain emphasis. So I'm using these delays 
as that kind of idea where just certain things, they get emphasis and then a little extra pizzazz when we hit it with that delay. Dudes that he paid and all my aunties is real true Amazons. Every uncle is a black James Bond. Smooth. Well, like right, just like on smooth, we want that to hit. But then on soul, I wanted to splash in a quarter note. So here we've got automation on our quarter note to waste sound. Well, like you got soul, but don't lose that groove up. All right. So that's not just a quarter note, is it? We got a little extra splash on there. We're actually doing a ping pong on that where it just is going back and forth. It's on a quarter note. Uh, we're rolling off, again, some of that top end to push it back and feedback just enough to let that ring out a few times over so we get that back and forth soul 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 right this is where we start to think a little bit about well how are people listening to this record i'm very lucky i'm in a studio uh welcome to the greenhouse and i've got my monitor is set up in a proper in a proper situation so i'm hearing everything right in the sweet spot that's not how a lot of people listen to music your average person when they're listening to music might have their Bluetooth speaker up on the countertop while they're doing dishes, or they may just be listening out of their phone, but a lot of people listen in headphones. And so that does keep them always in the sweet spot. So while I wanna make sure everything is mono compatible, I also wanna have enough side to side action that's a treat for your ears when you're in these headphones, right? So that's why we're doing the ping pong, just a little bit of extra something to get that side to side movement. The drums are giving us this pulsing forward and back movement, and then we go side to side with the effects. Well, like you got soul, but don't lose that groove. All the ancestors looking back at All right. So while we're on this page here, let's take a second and talk about templates. My mixing philosophy within Cubase or within anything is really kind of a funnel type shape, all right? At the top of that funnel, you've got your individual tracks. So here are all the tracks for the song. We got drums, bass, or loops, so on and so forth. Everything is color coded so I can quickly look either at my mixer or I can look at my project window and I already know, okay, Drums are green. Drums are always green in my templates. I'm Willie Green. I'm a drummer. That's how we do it. Bass is brown. Bass sounds like brown to me. Loops, or in this case, all our samples are purple. And then just in the hook, just to differentiate, um, we've got these in blue. Lead vocals are blue. Hooks probably shouldn't be that way, but whatever. That goes back to the days of mixing on a large format analog console. And I was the guy who would show up to the session with the rainbow pack of Sharpies. And I would always color code my stuff. Again, if I have, you know, a mix across 60 faders, I don't have the best handwriting, to be honest, y'all. And so if things are color coded, I know at least, okay, well, these are drums are over here. Or, oh, my guitars are neon green. Let me go find my neon green section. Here's my guitars. And then I can look. It just speeds me up that, that, that little bit. And that little bit of being efficient is, is, is great. And those few seconds it saved me will add up over the course of a mix. Now I'm saving minutes. Now I'm saving 15, 20 minutes. So I'm color coding everything. And then everything gets routed to a subgroup. And that's what's on this next mixer. I use two, maybe three mix consoles. All my channels are here on mix console one. And then mix console two, I've got any groups and then I've got my effects returns boom all right here and then over here is where the funnel continues so all of my drum tracks go to my drum bus makes sense right uh they all come here so if I want to process them all as a unit because while we have individual drums drums as a whole are a part of your song so I may want to process those as a group right so that's what's on the drum bus Subs, in this case, is just our bass. If I had any kind of melodic 808 type thing going in there, that might go to the subs track. That's the low end stuff. So I can quickly address that. If it's all too boomy, I can go right to it. Music is everything that is not drums and bass. Well, drums are music. 
uh, and drums are instruments. For the lack of a better term, this is just the music track. So in this case, all of our samples are going there. Keyboards, the pad, extra stuff I added in the hook is going there. So that's music. Lead vocals are just that. And then backgrounds, similar. But then we go down another step on that funnel. This instrumental bus gets all of the instruments. So drums, subs, music, all of these are routed here to the instrumental bus. Leads and backgrounds are going to the vocal bus. And then all of my effects I actually have coming back to this effects bus. So if my effects are feeling a little bit too much, like if it's a little soupy, I can pull down the effects. If I want to kind of brighten everything, I can do that. But when you're dealing with this, remember, it's important to remember if I bring this down, that's all of my effects. And it's all of my effects post fader, post where I'm sending them before. So this is generally at zero. So when I, as I'm mixing and I'm sending things, they stay as I'm expecting them to. And these three buses here come down to the red fader at the end. You all know that. That's my stereo out, my mix bus, my two mix. A lot of different ways you can call it, but this is where everything comes together. Uh, Let's go mix bus for today. Sometimes I'll have a lot of stuff on there. Sometimes I won't do much at all. Today we're just using the Magneto, which is the tape simulator, just for a little bit of saturation, just a tiny bit, just 10% just for a little bit of that glue, just so it's something for everything to bounce off on and kind of scrunch it together. Uh, I also do have that on my drum bus here, a lot more saturation because I want that on the drums, but everything comes down through this funnel till it gets to the mix bus. So we looked at our vocals in the verse, we looked at our dubs. Now let's take a look and see what's happening vocally in the choruses. So we'll start with chorus one. Love you, everything that you are. Everything that you ain't, you my one true star. Shoot for the moon, your land in the galaxy. Heaven is within and connected by your tapestry. I love you. Everything that you are, everything that you ain't, you my unborn star. Shoot for the moon, in your land in the galaxy. Heaven is within. Yuck. Is you sense or you suck? So, we've got four total vocals going on in the hook. We've got our main lead hook here, and then we've got, this is not a dub now, this is a straight full on double, as you remember from the tracking session. And this, it's not loud, you can barely hear it, but it's just to add a little bit more weight, a little bit, a little bit more thickness to her voice when we get to that chorus. The chorus is the thesis of your term paper right? That is the point. Everything else is going on. The verses are alluding to things. The verses are telling the story. But if there's one part that someone's going to listen to and get the entire concept of your record, that's the hook. That's the chorus. So I want to make sure that those leads there are just a little bit more full so everything lifts up a little bit energy-wise. Uh, so hook one is here. And hook two is a solid 6 dB below that, right? And... Similar to what we were doing with the dubs, I'm notching some stuff out. Um, a little bit more on the top so we can lay her back just a little bit. And then around 2K, I don't want this to be as intelligible as I want it to be weighty and kind of felt. So I'm not pushing out that most intelligible part of her voice. I'm just blending it so these things sit right together. Channel strip, same deal as I'm doing on the leads. Love you. Everything that you are, everything that you ain't, you my one true star, shoot for the moon. All right, so alone, it just sounds like a vocal. Together, it sounds like, okay, now there's kind of two, but in context, that second one blends in just enough when we get this. Love you, everything that you are, everything that you ain't, you my one true star, shoot for the moon. All right, and then we've got a couple dubs in there. One true star, shoot for the moon, certain things we want to accent. And on these, we're squishing them a little bit. Let's we'll see how much. Love you, everything that you are, everything that you ain't. You my one true star, shoot for the moon. All right, so those are squishing more because I want this, those to stay right where they're at. They're panned out, not all the way, uh, but about 60 degrees out on either side. I want them to just hang there and just, again, emphasize now with some width the real key moments in the hook. 
So we're doing that. But now I'm sending these to the ping pong. So these emphasis things now get that extra echo, that roll to kind of impact them a little more. And then with the room, just to give them some more space. So when these come in, the, the chorus gets very wide. Because our lead and our and our, our double are both straight down the middle. I want those, I want full attention on those. And these provide some side to side width on, on accented words. In the second chorus, however, now we've got some more vocals. We've got the sung vocals that I did. So we've got three layers of that because I wanted that to be able to get wide. So we've got left, center, right, and I'm actually hard panning these. Hard panning is a real choice, all right? And it goes back to the idea of where people are listening to and specifically on headphones. When you hard pan in headphones, it sounds like it's actually a little bit behind your ears. It's like kind of back here. And that can be cool, but if you overdo that, if you just have like one guitar track just laying on the left side, you're going to wind up, the mix is going to feel like this, right? So I want to keep things balanced if I'm going to hard pan them. But with these, because I've got the anchor of that center one, it stays in focus, but it's just very wide. So let's hear that. I'm going to take out those harmonies that I added. Everything that you are. And those are getting the delay as well. And then with the harmonies, now I'm going to fill in the cracks a little bit to where we were. So we can even go a little bit wider. Let's go to 70 with these, right? So we've got our leads, two down the middle. We've got our dubs that still come in, and they're at 60. And now with the harmonies, we've got the top of my background dead center and then left and right. So we're still balanced in the middle. And then we're going to sneak in these harmonies at 70 degrees on either side. And we're going to tuck the tenor down in there. So now we're using a wide range of the stereo field. There's a lot of room between left and right. And I'm someone who I want all the real estate. I want to stretch out and get things really wide. And you can't know how wide something is until you know how, how wide something else isn't. Remember, mixing is all about contrast. Nothing feels loud if everything is shouting at you. Nothing feels quiet and reserved if something else doesn't turn up and get, and get reckless. So here, I want to be able to, we've got this center, center vocal so much. And then in the second hook, when the singing comes in, now we've really stretched out and we're really being expansive. So we're doing that. We've got a little bit of that delay going on so we can roll through the hills and let's see how it sounds all together. Everything that you are, everything that you ain't, you my one true star. Shoot for the moon, your land in the galaxy. Heaven is within, you connected by your tapestry. I love you. Everything that you are, everything that you ain't, you my unborn star. Shoot for the moon in your land in the galaxy. Heaven is within. All right, so now we're using all of our real estate. We're stretching out, and I love it. I love it. So that's vocals in general. I like how the sounds are working. We'll make sure they're working with everything else. So let's look at that. Now that we're here, let's go ahead and look at these drums. We'll just solo them real quick so I can demonstrate. All right, so that's our general drum loop. Kick, snare, clap, and then that kind of digi-affected shaker that we have. And I'm throwing the drums in a little bit of verb. Here, I want some space on them. The slap wouldn't be appropriate, but in the mix, that doesn't ring through as much because the samples are eating up a lot of that reverb. It's hard to apply reverb to something in isolation because in the context of the mix, it's gonna get eaten up by other things. So let's hear that together. I thank moms for the daughter that she raised. I thank pops for the dues that he paid. And I'm right, so that verb doesn't hit the same when everything is in, which is what we want. So if I'm when I'm applying reverb to things, I'm doing that in context because you might 
have your snare. If I if I send the snare to the reverb soloed, I would use a lot less. That seems like a lot, but then in context, there wouldn't be enough space there. So it's all remember, it's all about context. We're not going super crazy on these drums. Let's look at the kick. It looks like there's a lot of stuff, but it's all right here for me. So I just kind of grabbed things as I went. So EQ wise, rolled off a good amount of the top. There's you know, plenty of definition up there. There's this, I think, even has. Right? It has that kind of, I don't know, wood, we'll call it wood block or something. I don't mind a little bit of that, but that's not what we're doing here today. Uh, so I'm rolling that off a little bit. And then some of our tubby places where it was building up too much, we'll go ahead and we'll roll that out too. Envelope shaker, shaper, I'm taking a little bit off of the release. I want that kick to be, I want that kick to be nice and tight. And this is not the kind of pattern where it needs to have a long, long trail. So let's go ahead and we'll use that off. I consider myself a distortionist and when I can grime something up, I will. I wanted it to push forward. So we hit it with a little bit of tube saturation, just a little bit of drive here. And then we're compressing because now in this case, I wanna, I don't want that high end from that wood block thing which has more transient energy than maybe some of the low end. I don't want that triggering the, the compressor. So that's, so that's off. The boominess that's in this kick, I don't want that over triggering the compressor. So now I got the EQ pre-compressor, pre all this stuff. So solid ratio, five and a half. Uh, quick attack, cause I'm grabbing right at, right, right at those transients. Right, and then just a little bit of limiter, just a little bit, just to give that smacky smack in there. I want that kick to bounce off that. I want it. I, I, I want that kick to knock. So a little bit of that limiter in there. I thank moms for the daughter that she raised. I thank pops for the. So on the snare now, I'm gonna turn off the room so we can just hear just what I'm doing here. So that sample already has some verb in it. That's fine. Uh, the room actually smooths that out a bit. We're squishing this one. I want this to be tight. It's got that ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, that 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 kind of pattern that you know is pretty common. I want that to be just chat chat. I just want to be that chunk. So we're going ahead and we're hitting that pretty hard with the compressor. And then with the EQ, it was just piercing a little bit up at 2K. I don't want this to be a bright snare. I want this kind of more natural round sound in there. So that's what we've got. I haven't talked about filtering just yet. On the vocals, I'm doing a lot of low cut or high pass filtering. Anything below what she needs for her voice, we're gonna go ahead and get that out of there because along with the kick, we've got a big bass here and we don't need any spare rumbles. Same thing with the snare drum and a lot of other stuff. We'll do that with the with the with the samples too. I'm taking out a good bit under 140, 142. I don't want that low in there. I want my low reserve for my sub instruments. Um, and then on top, because this snare is so bright. That's just not that's not the vibe I'm looking for. So I turn on that I turn on the low pass. And I find that I love that there are five different filter options here in the pre section of the channel strip. Six dB per octave is a very shallow slope, and you see how much that's taking off. Although I do have it rolled down pretty far. But even up high, if you've got something that you feel is just a shade bright, just toss that on. Put it at put put it put put the put the roll off at six, and that is going to just ease off that top end of whatever is just kind of piercing you. Or that low pass will take care of it for you every time. So that's what's going on with the snare claps. Similar things. We're taking out a lot of the bottom, plenty around this low mid area because I don't need super chunky claps. This is the claps are just to layer with the snare on the two and four to enforce the backbeat, reinforce the backbeat. And so I don't want to over chunk that where this is like an event every time it hits. It's just to add a little reinforcement there. 
a little piercing up here. And then again, just to ease off that top. This is, we just turned it on. We didn't even roll off. So here's our claps. Just that little bit, that little bit of roll off does the world for me. And then our digi shaker, send it to the sum of the room, just like the clap and the snare. And then uh, eighth note delay, just to give a little bit of push and pull. Right, so now we've got that, you know, we're just easing in the second part of that loop, and it's also going to be a little bit wider, so now we not only have a rhythmic thing that's shaking rhythmically, it's also moving front to back, but it's also moving front and center to back and to the sides. So now we've got a nice, wide shaker thing going on without taking up all the space in the world. So... That's what's happening on our individual drum tracks. And then like we said, we're all coming back to our drum bus and then this magneto. So it is actually relatively, relatively subtle. I don't need a lot there, even though it's hitting a lot of saturation. I'm rolling off the top end. This, These aren't those kind of drums that need to be super bright and crispy. Uh, so I'm just rolling off some of that top end on them. For the daughter that she raised. I thank pops for the dues that he paid. And all my aunties is real true Amazons. Every uncle is a black James Bond. Smoke. Walk like you Let's jump over and look at the samples real quick, and then we'll see what we're doing with the bass, because uh, those two things are going to interplay. So before we get to the send, we've got six total sample tracks, and they're all in the same places basically as from when we chopped them. When I chop, I got to put things where I think they're going to go, and they usually don't deviate too much from that. Although if you've noticed, I widened the strums just a bit. All right, so just a little bit of left-right play. And again, that's the bonus for the headphone wearers. They spread out not just for the excitement of having that with, but they leave a spot there for the vocal and for the other main samples. Cause these aren't the main sample. The main, main sample is this. All right. So that's the main sample. And what are we doing with that? So we got some EQ. We got, more elaborate EQing going on. I uh, want to take off a little bit of the top. I know it's a noisy sample, um, but I like noisy samples. I like samples with weird things happening because there's this concept of ambient loops where if you loop four bars of any sound, if you loop it for long enough, at some point, these random sounds and, and things within it always hit at the same time, so this now becomes part of your loop. And that's a way that I like to give unexpected vibes in the loop without it's necessarily me playing everything. Sometimes that magic of, what is that whistle sound? Is that some bird crying in the back of the park where Siggy was playing this? Well, yeah, probably. I don't know that bird, but they were there, and it was part of the vibe. But the way that hit and the pitch that that hit, I want to keep that. I'm not trying to, you know, go in and just chop all the noise out. I could do that, but that then makes this kind of a sterile exercise. So I like the noise short of it, but there's something very peaky at 5K. Let's figure out what that was. I thank moms for the daughter that she raised. I thank pops for the dude. 
See, and that's why you don't listen to solo, because I'm getting ready to tell you all, huh, I kind of like the more definition on Siggy's voice when that uh, band three is out. But when that band three is out, that definition is now getting in the way of definition of Liquid's voice. And these are the challenges of not just using a sample, but using a vocal sample as part of your beat. As much as you might like what that vocal sample is saying or doing, it's not the vocal of the song. And so I'm ducking that here just to get that part out of the way so Liquid can rap, can rap right over it. Similarly, in these same two spots where you know, we tend to have some buildup. I'm notching these up more because I want to get that out of the way so I'm not indirectly crowding the lead vocal and, and, and the frequencies that we need there. I thank moms for the daughter that she raised. I thank pops for the do. Okay, and then we're automating a little bit of delay. Uh, and this goes back to when I first made the beat, but we kept that. Like I said, I mix as I'm going, and especially in the production phase. There's certain things that I have to do just to make it sit right for me, and then that just becomes the song. So, and family and family and family and that's what's hitting in that delay. That's part of my chop. I could have taken that and sliced it out and put it on the timeline, but delays are more fun. <laughs> Okay, and then you remember we have our second chop in here. And that's got a radio filter. I think that's just the phone line preset from the stock EQ. That is to give me some different definition in the different chops. So everything is not just the same chop, but there's a different texture, just a di little bit of different movement for your ear. And then we got our strums. So all of these are coming to our loop bus, which is going to feed into music. Just in case I want to process them all together, I tried a multiband compressor. Eh, wasn't what I needed, wasn't what I was looking for. So I wound up just notching a couple of other things out. But the great way to do this is using the comparative EQ feature, where now... The blue that we're going to see, that's the EQ that I'm working on on this track. But this orange is actually being sent from my vocal bus. So I'm referencing the loops and making space dependent on what I see from the vocal. Let's take a look at this. So the orange you'll see will be the lead vocal, and the blue is going to be our loop. I thank moms for the daughter that she raised. I thank pops for the dues that he paid. And now my aunties is real true Amazons. Okay, so now I'm making room in the loops for that lead vocal. So that's what's going on here, and then we're just adding a little brightness back on top. So that's what's going on with our samples. Now we've got all that in. Let's look at the bass. Land out there, it belongs to you. Anything you imagine you could do. The world is bound to tell you no, so demand a yes. And you will always win if you always give your best. See your friends or the family. All right, so we've got some heavy saturation going on with the bass. And I'm, all, I'm usually using some kind of saturation, some kind of distortion on the bass, even if it's not, I mean, it's not a punk rock record. It's not that kind of distortion. But I'm adding some harmonics to that low end. As we talk about thinking about playback systems, we need to consider bass challenge playback systems, right? If you're just listening on your phone or if you're listening on earbuds or something like that or laptop speakers, that low end may not come through the same way it does when you mix in your studio with the subs and the big speakers and everything. But our job as mix engineers is to make sure that things are translating wherever they go. So everybody who hears the record gets that same impact. And saturating your low end will help you with that. What that's going to do is it's going to add harmonics on top of that bottom fundamental frequency. 
And that's going to let people's ear know where that fundamental actually is based on the overtones and the harmonics that came from it. So as I saturate that and add some grit to it, that's going to let me know, okay, now this is going to be able to be heard on a smaller speaker system or something without a sub. And I listen on smaller speakers. I got a couple pairs of speakers in here. Uh, I got some Atom A7s. I got an Aventone Mix Cube in here. And so I listen on the different things. I listen on my phone and make sure that wherever this goes, that bass is coming through true and clear. And we're squashing it a good deal because I want to just take all that and just lock it in. No EQ on this. And then I just rolled off the attack on it a little bit. I didn't want it to be too punchy. I just want that kind of nice smoothness. So let's hear it. Land out there, it belongs to you. Anything you imagine you could do. The world is bound to tell you no, so demand a yes. And you will always win if you always give your best. See your friends or the family you choose. Right, so we see we're driving the compressor here, the tube compressor. Got some character going on. And then that's just going right to my subs bus and that's just gonna sit just where I need it. So that covers the elements. Let's take a look at some automation. We talked about automating the dubs. And so you see there's certain points here. I want more of the eighth note. So I'm gonna automate up here. I'm gonna drop that in certain places. Certain volume of certain dubs needs to come up. Liquid's performance was very consistent. And then I'm using a compressor on it now, so I don't have a lot of rides to do as far as the lead vocal. But some of these dubs, I want to make sure they're a little more active in the first verse. I want to make sure they're sitting where they need to. The end pieces, the couple spots here on the lead vocal, where it's just... You can't dial home. I love you. 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 That I love you. I love you is the theme of this whole record, right? So we're going to let that go ahead and ring out nice. And then I promised you some filter work at the top of the record. I want to give the beginning just a little bit of something, a little bit something to open us up into the rest of the song. Liquid comes in right off the top. There's not an intro here. So I'm using the first four bars of her verse like that. So on my instrument bus, which is all my instruments subbed down, uh, submixed down here, I have automated the pre-section. So I'm adding in a heavy low pass and also a heavy high pass up to 280, and that gives us this. I'm so grateful. Look to the God above, you so able. Look at the God within, she's so capable. Think it, believe it, just know that it's attainable. I thank moms for the daughter that she raised. Just to filter down that sample a little bit more, there's already some radio effect work going on within the song, you know, the different chops of the samples, and then we're coming back to that at the end. We got a little more radio effect on here. This isn't the record for pitched down reverbs that ring out for six bars like I'm prone to do on other stuff. Uh, this isn't that one, but I want to give just a little bit of variety at the top, and then when we ride out at the end, after that last chorus, I took, uh, as we saw in the editing, I took some of these parts and I, I stretched them out, just kind of dealing with samples. But the I love yous that Liquid did, I wanted those to be in that radio voice. And I thought about doing all the vocals there, but I don't sound that good on the radio. So we took that off of my voice and right here. So on our vocal channel, we are bringing the EQ in and out depending on where in the song we are. Right, so when it's just liquid, like right here, the bypass is out and we're in radio voice. And then where I come back in right after that, we'll switch it out so I don't sound bad. And then back in for the last hit of liquid after that, following the last two I love yous. So that's the breakdown of the mix. We're done, but what do we do with it? Well, we gotta print, because you need to print the send somewhere. So the last part of my template 
we printed this mix, so th this is where they are. But I have an audio track for each of my for each of my subgroups. So drums, subs, music, leads, backgrounds, instruments, vocals, and effects. All of those get printed as stems. In Cubase, this is one of my favorite things. If you have a track that has no output, you can route the output of a group into that audio track. And as long as it doesn't send anywhere, you can arm it and you can record right to it. So all of these tracks here are being fed from their respective subgroups. And then the mix, outputting to nowhere, I've got no sends on because Cubase won't let you feed back. And then I'm sending that input from the stereo out. So the output right here at the end of my line is feeding this mix track. So all I have to do is arm my print tracks and hit record. And then all of those things will print right to there. So I can bounce my main mix and all of my stems all at once. And then for my alternates, my instrumental, my TV version, which is without the lead vocal, I just go through, I mute whatever I don't want, and I just print another pass. And so then I can create all of my mixes. They're all right here for me within my session file. So I don't have to go looking somewhere else if I just need to find that WAV file. If I need to do an edit or clean out a click or a pop or something, I can do that all right here. And it stays with my Cubase session. So there we are. That's the creation of Liquid's family from top to bottom, produced by me, recorded right here in the greenhouse with all of y'all. I appreciate you tuning in and checking me out. And we'll have a lot more to come in the future. Big shouts to Sonic Scoop. Big shouts to Steinberg for helping me put all this together. I've been on the Steinberg thing for almost two decades now. The reason I choose Steinberg is because it has all the tools that I need right here. You see that I have to go out of Steinberg for anything, and it's all right here for me, and I love that. So shout out to y'all, and shout out to everybody watching. Again, my name is Willie Green, and that's what I know. Peace.